Hi, and welcome back to our Lent Sunday School sessions. And I um, have a couple of announcements to make today. I'd like to thank the youth group for putting together their video talking about Lent and the things they've given up for Lent. And for their leaders, Cindy Hood and Julie Montandon, um, for putting that video together and making the kids think about what the purpose was for that. I also have an announcement to make about the Palm Parade, which is gonna be next week. There is gonna be a Palm Parade during worship on March 28th, Palm Sunday. At 920, meet in the Fellowship Hall. And if you could please follow the COVID recommendations for the church right now, that would be great. Um, go ahead and take your at-home attendance if you're still tracking that. And um, Ryan and Kristen Ross had done lessons for the first three weeks of Lent. And uh, Ryan left off the last lesson with um, when Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. And I would like to pick up the lesson from there. As a Sunday school teacher, this lesson about Jesus's arrest and Peter's betrayal, um, or, you know, Peter denying Jesus, is a hard lesson to teach because it is some of the darkest hours um, before, you know, the end of Jesus's life. So um, I am going to lead us in an opening prayer, and then I am going to read scripture to tell the story today of Jesus's arrest. So please bow your head, and here is the opening prayer. Dear God, we know Jesus is our forever friend. Help us stand up for Jesus. Amen. So the passage I'm going to read today uh, is in Mark 14. And it is uh, verses 43 through 72. Mark 14, verses 43 through 72. There's a lot going on uh, in these verses. It is the arrest of Jesus, Judas betraying Jesus, and Peter denying knowing Jesus to the crowd. So I'm going to start in with the scripture now. Suddenly, while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the 12 disciples, came with a mob carrying swords and clubs. They had been sent by the chief priests, legal experts, and elders. His betrayer has given them a sign, arrest the man I kiss and take him away under guard. As soon as he got there, Judas said to Jesus, Rabbi, then he kissed him. Then the mob came and grabbed Jesus and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew a sword and struck the high priest slave and cut off his ear. Jesus responded, Have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me like an outlaw? Day after day, I was with you, teaching in the temple, but you didn't arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And all his disciples left him and ran away. One young man, a disciple, was wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They grabbed him, but he left the linen cloth behind and ran away. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests, elders, and legal experts gathered. Peter followed him from a distance, right into the high priest's courtyard. He was sitting with the guards, warming himself by the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin, which that's like a group of, uh, like a group of um, high priests and like a tribunal or people that were the leaders in that time, were looking for testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they couldn't find any. Many brought false testimony. So they didn't tell the truth. That's what false testimony is. Many brought false testimony against him, but they contradicted each other. Some stood to offer false witness against him, saying, we heard Jesus saying, I will destroy this temple constructed by humans, and within three days I will build another, one not made by humans. But their testimonies didn't agree even on this point. 
Then the high priest stood up in the middle of the gathering and examined Jesus. Aren't you going to respond to the testimony these people have brought against you? But Jesus was silent and didn't answer. Again, the high priest asked, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the human one sitting on the right side of the Almighty and coming on the heavenly clouds. When the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we need any more witnesses? You've heard his insult against God. What do you think? They all condemned him. He deserves to die. Some began to spit on him. Some covered his face and hit him, saying, Prophecy! Then the guards took him and beat him. Meanwhile, Peter was below in the courtyard. A woman, one of the high priest's servants, approached. She saw Peter warming himself by the fire. She stared at him and said, You were also with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't understand what you're saying. And he went outside into the outer courtyard. The female servant saw him and began a second time to say to those standing around, this man is one of them. But he had denied it again. A short time later, those standing around again said to Peter, you must be one of them because you are also a Galilean. But he cursed and swore, I don't know this man you're talking about. At that very moment, the rooster crowed a second time. Peter remembered what Jesus told him. Before a rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And Peter broke down sobbing. Peter failed his friend when he said that he didn't know Jesus. Whenever we do things we shouldn't do, this is our way we say, I don't know him. But Peter never denied Jesus again. He learned to stand up for Jesus and Peter knew Jesus was his forever friend. So um, last year and in past years uh, teaching Sunday school, quite often we learn different sign languages uh, to talk with our hands um, for people that cannot hear. And so there is a sign language um, part of the lesson today. So I'd like to show you the two signs, um, Jesus. So it is going to be you hook. Um, so take your middle finger and go like this. The middle finger, you go over the right hand first and then the left hand. So whichever way you're facing, this is Jesus. And then friend, you hook your two index fingers like this. Hook, hook. So Jesus is my friend. So I'm gonna read you uh, some different stories and it is going to be about a boy or a girl and I need you to listen carefully. If the boy or girl in the story stands up for Jesus, then you stand up and sign the words, Jesus and friend, as you say, Jesus is my friend. Here's story one. Tad's brother Jeremy got a new model airplane for his birthday. He worked very hard putting it together. One day, while Jeremy was at basketball camp, Chad took the airplane without permission. He slipped it back into his brother's room before he got home. So he did something without permission. Nope, this isn't one for sign language, is it? He didn't stand up for Jesus. Story two, a new family moved into the neighborhood. They had a boy the same age as Aiden. Aiden knew how it felt to be new, so he invited the new boy to sit with him on the bus and invited him to go to church with him. Jesus is my friend. Story three. Michelle saw a bracelet at the store. It would look great with her new outfit. She had already spent all of her allowance for the week. When no one was looking, 
she slipped the bracelet into her backpack. That is not standing up for Jesus. Story four. Erica was invited to go to a friend's house for a slumber party on Saturday night. Erica said, I can go, but I have to leave in time to go to Sunday school and church on Sunday. Jesus is my friend. That was standing up for Jesus, wasn't it? So this story about Jesus's arrest isn't an easy one to hear. And one part of the scripture that happened before is that Judas betrayed him by kissing him on the cheek and he did it for money. And so I have here how much money he took for it. 30 pieces of silver. Mine, of course, are dimes, but there's 30 pieces there. So Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. He never got over that. It's important for us to stand up for Jesus and to stand up for our friends. Our closing prayer um, has a little, like it's an echo prayer. So I'm going to say a line and then I would like you to say the line after me. So I will say a line and then I would like you to respond. I don't even know the man you're talking about. I don't even know the man you're talking about. Here is our closing prayer. Light candle. Let's pray. God, sometimes we do things that are wrong. It's like we are saying, I don't even know the man you're talking about. Forgive us when we make mistakes. We do not want to say, I don't even know the man you're talking about. We know that Jesus is our forever friend. Help us to stand up for Jesus. Amen. All right, so once again, I wanna remind you, uh, next week is going to be the Palm Parade on March 28th, 920 Meet and Fellowship Hall at the United Methodist Church Esterville uh, for the in-person. Um, we just are still doing church only uh, in-person. Sunday school is still virtual like this lesson. So I hope you guys have a great week.